Hello, and this is the first unit on our APA MLA detailed lectures for the class. Now, let's just begin by saying this stuff can be some really boring stuff, but we'll try to keep it concise, try to keep it clear. The main goal of the APA and the MLA, which is the American Psychological Association and the Modern Language Association, is to try to keep your writing in a style that is easy to read. So basically it's to help your English. And you may say, well, I'm not a native English speaker. English is my second language or third language. Um, I can understand that, but why do native speakers even need to use something like the MLA or the APA guidelines? And it comes down to, this is just a guide, a style guide. The more researchers can write their research in a way that everyone can understand and accept, makes the research easier to be understood and accepted. So a style guide is a way to help your writing become standard, normal, to fit what everybody expects and to not cause confusion. Key point, avoid confusion. So what we're going to do in these lessons is go over the details. There are two main sources for this information and that is the APA style guide and the MLA style guide. You can buy those online or by paper or you may get them from the library. The most important point though I would say is don't just cruise online using Google and think you find those rules and that's enough. You really should get the manuals, sit down with them next to your thesis while you're writing and look things up to check them carefully. Later on, in a few lessons later, we're going to get into the details of how to write your references. It's very detailed, very technical, and of course, the only way to really get that right is to, you know, follow the guide, which it really helps have some paper. What's the big differences between the APA and the MLA? Well, the big differences, I think, are both of them emphasize style but the APA spends a lot of time emphasizing style. So the APA manual is so thick, the MLA ma manual is much, much thinner. MLA just mainly focuses on the citations and the references, the mechanics of how to execute those. MLA is mostly used in sciences, whereas the APA is mostly used in the humanities. Now, we should remember that it always depends on your journal, doesn't it? If the journal you're sending to has some special requirements, you need to follow those requirements above all. The first thing we can touch on is the MLA and APA both discuss plagiarism. What is plagiarism? Well, plagiarism basically comes down to you've copied something, you've put it into your writing, your thesis, your report, or your research paper, and you did not tell the reader that this came from somewhere else. It's very important to remember that plagiarism, although in Eastern countries like China, Japan, Korea, this is not such a big deal. We often copy what other people have written as a kind of way to learn it, as a way to honor it. But in the West and in research writing, it's very important. They're very strict about this, that you not copy something. Does that mean you can never copy anything, not even an idea? The answer is yes. If the ideas, everyone knows them, you can write those. But if you're taking an, even an idea or just one or two words, even just one word from someone else's research, you really do need to cite it, use a reference. And we're gonna learn about using citations later. But the key goal is, I know where this idea comes from. This idea you wrote, I know where it comes from. I can track it down, I can find it. And that actually is a great way to make our research writing easier. Think about it. Research writing is not asking you to come up with a great new idea or a great big book. It's asking you to help organize the ideas that came before that are related to your research so that the reader can quickly see those and track them down. If I want to learn more, I can see the reference. That's another beauty of it, is that you don't have to write a whole bunch in your paper to describe what happened before. Just one word, two words, one sentence, and a reference. If I want to learn more, I can use your reference to look it up. I can find the journal, 
I can find it online, I can find the information, even if it's a movie, a television show, a video on YouTube, you have given me a pointer to where that goes. People take this very serious in research, so please don't overlook it. Presenting another person's ideas, even if that information is just a small idea. If you present this as if it's your idea, then that's plagiarism. Surprisingly, you could even be guilty of plagiarizing yourself. That is to say, it's possible that you could copy something that you wrote before, and if you don't have a reference, if you don't cite it, then that means you are guilty of plagiarism. Just a few words is enough to get you in trouble with plagiarism. Just a few words. And referencing source material is not plagiarism. So this is something my students often get confused about. They get so worried that copying something is plagiarism that they end up they don't copy anything. No, that's not the point. The point is you can copy. You should copy. You should find material from other research and put it into your background into your literature review, into your introduction. But you just need to remember, cite where it comes from, use a reference. That is, this is from Smith, 1999. This is from Jones, 2017. So that's all you need. And then it's all okay. In fact, you can even copy large pieces, paragraphs from somebody's work. Take the exact paragraph and put it into your thesis, into your research paper. That's acceptable as long as you have a reference. Okay, now let's go on and begin with the details of what do we need to do in making these references and getting this information. The first thing I want to address is the difficult question that teachers have with students, and that is using the internet. The internet is a great source of information, but one of its biggest weaknesses is that information often is not complete. It's not detailed enough. It may have some general ideas, but more often than not, the biggest problem I see on the internet is it's secondhand information, secondary information, not primary, not source material. That is, you're reading someone who wrote something about what he read someone else wrote on another web page somewhere. Uh, that's a little bit troublesome. So you really need to be careful of that. I think that as the MLA manual points out, Google, Wikipedia, they're okay as a beginning but not as an end. You're okay to use Google to help you find some information. You can use Wiki to help you find but it's not the place to end. You need to follow up. Try to find the sources. And of course it's really great that Wiki, at the bottom of their pages, has sources. Why do they do that? Because they want to help you find that original information. Track it down for yourself. That's why that is there. That's not there just for fun. That's there for that hard work. So when you find some information on the internet, like on a Google search or in a Wiki, there are some things you can ask. Who is this information from? What is the title? of the source information. Not the wiki, but the source. Where is the information it came from? So if you're reading the wiki and it says, the Taiping Rebellion, tens of millions of people died in China. Well, you need to think, where does that come from? Look in the sources, then you can track it down. It's probably from a book, and that book has an author, and that's a good source. How was the source published? Was it published as a video? Was it published as text on a screen? Was it published in a magazine and then re-scanned onto the internet? Where did you find the source at? And when was the source published? Who, what, how, where, when? These are all great questions. 